You may have heard that growth factors are the cutting edge of skincare. Well, I will be talking about what growth factors are as they relate to skincare, or what they can do, are they safe, and what you can expect from them, all in today's video. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Chris, I'm a skincare expert, been doing this for 35 years, here to help you find skincare that will work for you, not into your wallet, and not do you more harm than good. So, if that's the kind of content you've been looking for here on YouTube, please be sure and hit subscribe and the notification bell so that you know when my new videos are up every week. All right, so depending on what you've heard, who you've heard it from, and the day you heard it on, growth factors in skincare are either a miraculous thing to put on your skin or they are maliciously, dangerously evil. For those of you who follow me, you already know we're gonna be leaning today on scientific studies about how growth factors actually work, are they safe, what they can do for you. Always, always science and clinical studies over speculation. So what exactly are growth factors? Well, growth factors are proteins that produced in the skin that regulate cell growth, so they are able to play a very important part or do play a very important part in the health of your skin. Now, growth factors are secreted in all of the skin types in the dermis, and the epidermis, and that includes things like keratin, that includes melanin, and that includes fibroblast and collagen. So if we produce these anyway in our skin, why do we actually need them in skincare products? Since growth factors are not actually growth hormones, big, big difference, and are natural substances produced within the cells to help repair damaged cells, help produce new, healthier cells, they also promote the formation of collagen and elastin to give your skin firmness and elasticity. So daily use of skincare products that contain growth factors have been shown to improve things like fine lines, wrinkles, dryness, improving your skin's tone, texture, and firmness. Now where the big debate comes in on growth factors in skincare is that there are some who say molecularly they are too large, the molecules in the growth factors are too large to penetrate the outer layers of the dermis or the stratum corneum. Therefore, that would mean they don't do much good. However, studies have shown over the last 15 years that there is actual improvement in skin health collagen, firmness, and even the reduction of the signs of aging, like photoaging, that's dark spots, hyperpigmentation, you know, fine lines, wrinkles, that textured skin look. That when applied to the surface of the skin in higher concentrations in some of these formulations, there is enough of a penetration to tell the cells or communicate the cells or turn on cell communication to actually increase collagen and elastin production and improve the areas that we just talked about. And as we've talked about on this channel many times, when growth factor formulations are used with say microneedling, laser therapies, or injections, they are often more effective than just in creams alone. The other big debate is where do these come from? Where do these growth factors come from? Well, contrary to popular belief, they are not coming from embryos or discarded embryos or anything like that. There are human-derived stem cells. There are plant-derived stem cells. There are even stem cells that are derived from snails. But what we are finding in human-derived stem cells is that depending on the source of the stem cell really determines how functionally able it is to improve something. So for example, if stem cells come from fat or fat stem cells, they don't have as much impact on the skin as say a dermal derived stem cell like from fibroblasts. So when we look at human derived stem cells, really it's the fibroblast stem cells that have the most impact on our skin. That kind of clears a whole lot of things up right there. Then there are plant derived stem cells like apple stem cells. You will see that in a lot of skincare formulations, plant derived stem cells again, in studies not as effective still work to some degree, but not as effective as those human-derived stem cells. They stimulate biochemical pathways that promote skin tissue repair and regeneration. They also promote the formation of collagen and elastin, which gives your skin firmness and thickness. But the thing to understand is that no one growth factor dominates this process, and it usually takes a mix of these to create that improvement in damaged skin and collagen synthesis. So when these are formulated in skin creams with other ingredients like vitamin C and certain types of peptides, you really get a bigger benefit than you would as using a growth factor like as a serum by itself. Now there are a lot of different types of growth factors in these formulations. We'll put in the video description box below some of the formulations that I recommend you check out if this is something you're interested in using. I have done several videos on growth factors 
as a product standalone. So I, again, I'll include those, but I'll also include a list of the different growth factors or the common growth factors that we find in skincare products by name and what they actually do all in a list for you down below so you can check all that out after we're done here in today's video. Which brings us to the other giant question that I get about growth factors and are they safe? Well, they do appear to be safe. There are no FDA bans or regulations or anything like that. And in studies, their short-term use and efficacy has been proven. However, we don't know the long-term benefit or the long-term dangers, if there are any, of using growth factors in skincare. Again, growth factors are not growth hormones. They're not going to be changing the balance of hormones in your body, but because of their ability to get cells to communicate, divide, and increase, there are some concerns that long-term use in certain individuals, let's say they have skin cancer issues, that growth factors might actually contribute to the division of those cancer cells. So that is still being studied and fleshed out, if you will, what a word, but it's accurate one to see what the long-term benefits or dangers are, if any. I can tell you there haven't been, not that I could find anywhere, any reports of negative effects. Again, these growth factors are in very small amounts in these skincare products, and we're not really altering the skin biome that much because so much of what we put on the outside of our skin can't be absorbed very far. However, there are exceptions to that in topicals that we talk about all the time, like retinol. We do know that retinol does turn on cell communication at some of the lower, deeper levels under the stratum corneum, creating more collagen, more elastin, also helping to reduce and remove precancerous skin cells. So retinol, not a growth factor, that's a vitamin acid that we apply to the skin, but there is a similar mechanism that happens in the cell communication with some of these growth factors. So giant cause for concern, not really. It really is a personal call on what you wanna do for you and whatever benefits that you seem to get out of them because a lot of people report really great results. And if you want more proven ways to roll back the clock on your skin and reduce the signs of aging, be sure to check out this video that is coming up next. Thank you guys so much for watching today and supporting the channel. I appreciate you. Stay beautiful and I will see you over on that next video.